The first time I met Christian therapist Ron Deal, we were on the set of The 700 Dad, Club. Ron Deal. Ron, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. It's a pleasure. You know, His take on the Christian family and Christian single was so real and practical, I thought he was perfect for our single series. But what I didn't know was that for over three years, while Ron counseled others to trust God in their personal crisis, he was fighting his own battle of trust. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not into your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. Let's talk about trust in God with you. What you don't know is that uh, we're here to talk about my son, Connor, who passed away three and a half years ago at the age of 12. And that was his favorite scripture verse. Miss him every day. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, <laughs> I know how many days. 1,315. Mm -hmm. I can't wait for the day when I get to stop counting. Well, the first diagnosis was pneumonia, so it's like, even older people survive pneumonia, yeah. so he's a healthy 12-year-old boy. We can, oh, that's easy. When it got to where one lung was getting so full, one night Ron and I, he was on one lung and I was on the other, and we were just praying, Lord, heal him. And I remember that morning when they told us he's responding to the treatment, three weeks tops, he'll lose a lung, you'll take him home, he'll be on oxygen, but I'm like, can it, like, because he could sing. He's still sick. I said, oh yes, he'll live a normal life. We went to get lunch and we came back and I remember the doctors coming in and I remember their faces. And I would not allow them to, to tell me what they were gonna tell me. So I ran out of the room because I just saw it on their faces. That's what I knew. And so everyone gathered, my parents, sister-in-law, friends, the boys. It was like two hours. It seemed like 30 seconds. And we sang him home. I'm so glad I was there. I was there when he came into the world. And I was there when he left. <laughs> you know, I'm kind of almost embarrassed to say it, but uh, I've, I've been in ministry for 25 years of my life, and I read scriptures and I counseled people who had gone through great, great tragedy, but I really didn't understand it. And I didn't know I didn't understand it until I lost Connor, because then I was thrust into it. And I was thrust into that tension between trusting God and not knowing what's going on, being out of control with this life and this situation and realizing how incredibly small I am. I mean, that's what tragedy does for us, is it teaches us how small we are. Because we don't get to run the, run the world, and we think we do, Chris, we do. We walk around with the illusion of control, that if I live right, I get right. If I do right, God blesses. Yes. That he'll insulate us and put a bubble around us? Yes. Okay, so if I don't really have any control and it's silly to think that I ever had it, then, then how do I put my trust in the one who does? I was really angry with God. Hmm. We had it out for a long time. I'm thinking seriously. I'm a minister's wife. I've done everything right. A plus B is supposed to equal C. Haven't I done enough? And I honestly started doubting. I stopped praying. I couldn't sing. I couldn't read his word. God is good all the time. Okay, God is good, but this isn't good. This doesn't feel good. What did you say to God? If we were a fly 
in a room and it was just you and God, what did you say to him? Why? Why? Why him? Why us? And you say you're good and you love me and this doesn't feel like love. Love doesn't hurt. And I used to judge people for having anxiety attacks and, you know, depression and... I know that despair. I know why people go there. And Satan was there saying, you can't do this. And you're going to be in this pit forever. And there is no hope and there is no help for you. And I felt it. I felt the darkness. I felt... I couldn't see out of that pit. I couldn't see. And people were praying for you. Well, is that a lot of good that did? I mean, honestly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Honestly, that was my take on it. Ron was like, he knew where Connor was, and he knew that this was more of an evil world, and God is still a good God, and we're going to hold on to him. And I'm thinking, I'm trying to hold on to you, but where are you? Show up. And I was done, and I had decided to be done. The enemy said, your husband's going to be so much better off and your boys are going to be so much better off because you are a mess. Mm. I had a plan. And I know that may sound selfish, but you know, that's where I was. And the phone rang and God had said, pay. He had thrown a friend out there who had lost a son 10 years before us, a sudden tragic death. And, um, I answered the phone and she said, what are you doing at this very moment? And I told her. Didn't surprise her one bit. No judgment, no condemnation, no throwing out scripture at me. It was like, it was as if, Chrissy, it was as if she put a ladder down into the pit and climbed down with me and sat in the muck in the mire of my grief. Mm. And after that phone call, I got up and I, went through my day and Ron came home, I think for lunch and I told him and he said, and all along I kept saying to God, throw me a bone, would you throw me a bone? Would you show up? And he said, do you think God threw you a big enough bone? Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah, I guess, I guess he did. And then that's when I started seeing that he was there mm -hmm. all along. He hadn't turned his back on me. I had turned my back on him. I'd read Job before Connor died. I never really read Job before Connor died. Mm. God thought so much of Job that he allowed Satan to test him. That tells you it's God's confidence in Job. I mean, it's a huge compliment to Job. And yet we have 37 chapters of Job screaming at God, calling out to him saying, listen, God, I didn't deserve this. Because his theology basically was, if you do right, you get right. Sure. And it didn't add up. He had done right, but he wasn't getting right. And so he's, he's going, God, you're wrong. When it's all said and done and he finally hears God say, look, I'm God and you're not. Job says, my ears had heard of you, but now my eyes have seen you. And let me tell you something, Christy. I, for a good couple of years after Connor died, I went to everybody I knew and I said, what does this mean? What did Job see that he could never see before his tragedy? What is it he doesn't know before his tragedy that he now knows about God after his tragedy? A very dear friend of mine, a minister, Jimmy, said, Ron, I think it has something to do, I don't know exactly what it is, but it has something to do with trusting God with what we will never have the privilege of understanding in this life. Mm -hmm. He had to choose to trust God. And anybody who's ever experienced any sort of loss or sadness or tragedy or broken dreams understands this better than they'd ever did before that. Mm -hmm. It's an unfortunate thing that we have to sometimes experience tragedy to to really shape our hearts mm. to trust God more. But that's what it comes down to, is do I choose to trust Him? What did you and your family do to regain trust in God or to redefine trust in God? I mean, what do you currently do? Yeah. 
getting back and reacquainted with God's word was mm. just life giving, just as you said, because there's so many things there that I didn't know to see. Yeah. I just couldn't see them. You know, I had blinders on my eyes and 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 then my eyes were lifted in in some way and I saw the depth of God's word. I see in the Psalms over and over and over again this tension between trusting God and having hope in God and the goodness of God and my pain and my anguish and my sorrow. It's there. Mm. I just never saw it. I didn't listen. I didn't have ears to hear. And it's there. And so getting reacquainted with Scripture has just been life-giving. Seeking wise counsel has been life-giving. Is there hope in tragedy? Mm. Is there ever hope in tragedy? There's always hope in tragedy. It doesn't mean tragedy doesn't stink. It doesn't mm. mean that it doesn't hurt. And I think that's really important because I think we get it wrong in church sometimes. Mm -hmm. I think we, we say hope as if it, the pain should go away. And that's not mm -hmm. what I'm saying. There's hope because our God is working a redemption in our story. Mm -hmm. And life may not be as you would want it to be, but you can trust God in it. Because he is not far from your pain. He feels your pain. He is with you in your suffering. He cares deeply about it. And he just wants us to remember and to trust him that he's good and that he is working on our behalf. He is working redemptively. Romans 8, 28, God works for the good of those who love him, does not mean that all things that happen to us are good. It just means God is going to renew it. He's going to redeem it. He's going to make something good. And we can trust him with that. And that's where our hope is.